Hello, Pokemon Masters! It's time to use your Master Ball on the legendary Pokemon of Gen 1 and some other Pokemon before that. Because I've actually drawn 151 Pokemon now and we're at the last part. So I'm finally done drawing 151 Pokemon. And the only thing that's left now is to show you guys. And we're going to start right where we left off on number 133. And it's one of the big fan favorites, Eevee. And its random type is Fighting. Inspired by the clothes of Japanese martial arts, I turned Eevee into a cute little fighter. I made a belt pink because of two reasons. One, I couldn't find any real pink belts, so it wouldn't be associated with any particular sport or style or anything. And two, because Sylveon is pink. Partly pink. And it kinda makes sense to be white and pink like Sylveon, which it evolves into. But not in this generation. In Yen 1, Eevee evolves into Vaporeon. New type, Dark. Jolteon. New type, Bug. And Flareon. New type, Ground. They're all dual types, having their original type, plus the new one. Cause otherwise I'd just get something like Psychic and I'd had to draw an Espeon and pretend I came up with a design or something. It would be really weird, that's why I just did dual types instead. Personal favorite is probably Flareon. No real backstory because Eevee can change into anything, so whatever it ends up as kinda makes sense. So we're moving on to the man-made Pokemon Porygon, and its new type is Dark. This Pokemon was created to hack into computers and ruin them by stealing data or corrupting files. Porygon was created in secret by an evil organization that's trying to take over Kanto. Wonder who they could be. Moving on to some fossils. It's our lord and savior, Omanyte. And its new type is Ice. Unlike regular Omanyte, they have to create their own shells using ice. So they prefer to be in cold places, cause otherwise their ice shell would kind of melt and they would be unprotected. And just like Omanyte, Omastar's shell is also made of ice. It's gotten better at making shells and it's gotten more spikes because it looks cooler that way. Okay fine, it's mostly for protection. Moving on to Kabuto. Its new type is Poison. The biggest difference between a normal Kabuto and this one is that it has a stinger on its tail. It's still pretty undeveloped and doesn't really get to its full size and power until it's a Kabutops. It's probably really obvious, but they're based on Scorpion. There's only one fossil Pokemon left, Pyrodactyl. And the new type is Ground. Pyrodactyl started digging instead of flying and eventually lost its wings until it became a ground living lizard. Ground type Pyrodactyl and Flying Aerodactyl like to live together. Ground Aerodactyl attacks its enemies using ground type moves. So naturally, being flying type, normal Aerodactyl is immune to all of those attacks. So they were able to help each other defeating enemies. Over to the sleekiest Pokemon of Gen 1, Snorlax. And its new type is Grass. Given that Alolan Pokemon are based on Hawaii, I just had to turn it into a hula dancer. Of course, seeing one of these lazy Pokemon actually dance is a rare sight. And therefore, it's considered incredibly sacred and special and amazing. And they're actually really amazing dancers. Of course, being a Snorlax means it sleeps most of its day. And we finally get a legendary Pokemon. Yay! And it's Articuno. Its new type is Psychic. Psychic Articuno has the gift of a thousand eyes, giving it powers to see into the past, the future, and of course, everything that's happening right now. At least that's how the legend goes. The legends also speak of Zapdos, with its new type being Ghost. It's said the only thing Articuno cannot see is what happens beyond life. The one who watches over the dead people and ghosts is instead Zapdos. And as the opposite of watching over death, we have Moltres, new type Water, looking over all things living. Because at least on Earth, water is the key to life. Next we have our tiny dragon, Dratini. New type water. Guess it likes to hang out with Moltres. By living in the deepest of oceans, Dratini lost its dragon-ness. And instead it became a sea snake. Or an eel, maybe? I don't really know. 
and it evolves into Dragonair. Just like regular Dorkini and Dragonair, there aren't two different to each other, just one is kind of bigger. And instead of having white wing horns as the regular Dragonair, this one is using sheller shells. When it evolves into Dragonite, it looks completely different, just like regular Dragonite. Dragonite is more based on a seahorse. Its yellow fins can actually glow. After all, he lives so far down in the oceans that he needs something to light up its surroundings. And the next Pokemon is number 150. It is the number one legendary Pokemon, Mewtwo. And its new type is Dark. Given that Mewtwo was created by humans, I think if humans were to create something that's supposed to be the most evil creature of all, they would make something that looks like a demon devil sort of thing. But of course, Mewtwo isn't actually evil, it's just misunderstood. And of course it's extremely powerful. And that takes us to the very last Pokemon, number 151, Mew. Its new type is Electric. Instead of light pink, it's light yellow. It's probably the hardest Pokemon to spot, because it can turn invisible and even if it couldn't, it goes by so fast you can never see it. What you might see is the sparkling trail of electricity, which it always leaves behind. And that's it, that's the last Pokemon, I'm not saying anything more about it because I'm done. I've drawn all 151 Pokemon. I don't want to draw anymore. Thanks for watching this series. Bye.